Welcome to video 27, uh, the third in the Echinodermata series of videos, and this is on class Ophiuroidea, which are brittle stars and basket stars. Uh, this is a brittle star. You can see a lot, of, a lot of spines. You'll notice that there's a little bit of difference between these and the uh, classic starfish, the asteroidians, where the, there's a central disc and the arms are slightly disc, well, they're connected, but they're, they're uh, not a continuous body uh, covering. This shows you a little bit more of the central disc, which is almost isolated with the arms uh, quite differently structured growing out of them. This is a basket star. So I imagine you can understand what type of feeding these things are doing. When here's a, another one, they're doing filter feeding, of course. The basket stars unfurl their uh, very ornate arms and feed in the current. All right, so what's different about these? What are the general characteristics of these? They have that more distinct central disc and then arms, um, and they have no ambulacral groove. If you remember the ambulacral groove from Asteroidia, were the one where the area in which the two feet came out. Uh, they do have two feet, but they are um, it, they stick out of little individual uh, holes in the bottom of the arm for every individual uh, two foot rather than one ambulacral groove. As all the kind of derms that do, they have a water vascular system. And uh, the two feet don't have suckers. They don't use those for uh, sticking onto the surface and moving. They mostly function in feeding or for moving um, particles that they capture into the mouth. And they don't have an anus. So they have a one, uh, sorry, a two way gut in which the mouth and the anus are the same opening. Uh, here's one of the local model br brittle star. You may have seen these uh, when you've been uh, diving. If you've been diving, um, especially at night, they're more common on a night dive. Or if you turn over rocks in the intertidal area or it's just subtidally, you probably have seen these. Here's an oared sand star, which uh, is not on sand, but on a reef. But anyway, these things all have, you can see the spines on the side of the arms are very long and they are used for purchase into, into soft sediment. And here's probably the more common one, the snake star, uh, which you'll find on most all reef habitats in uh, divable depths. If you turn over rocks and the like, you'll find these uh, snake stars. So, General characteristics continuing, they their arms, rather than being like the um, starfish arms, uh, one continuous sort of arm continuous with the body, they are divided into these little segments, like an annelid, these repeating segments, okay? And they um, just make more segments as the arm goes down, that's just getting tapering to a narrower, smaller tip. But the segments are repeating segments and rather than using their two feet, which you can see right here, they do have two feet with no suckers. Rather than using those two feet to stick, stick onto the surface and move, then they, um, they use those two feet for feeding. And these little spines on the side of each of the, um, all these rows of spines on the side of the, the arms, uh, are used for gaining purchase, and then they have a long muscle that goes down the length of the whole arm that uh, contracts and makes and helps them move. But they move quite differently than uh, regular sea stars. Uh, they all, each section, each uh, segment has four ossicles. Okay, we know ossicles are a little uh, bony skeleton part, and they are called shields and then one pair of podia. So the podia obviously are the two feet that stick out. Here is a side view of the, um, of the brittle star segment. So right here, they've got the 
aboral or top, right? Non oral side, the arm shield. So that's one right here. You can see this black bounded area right here. That is one shield. And then the oral side, which is the side with the mouth, faces down towards the substrate. And that's it's got a shield right there. Another ossicle. And then you have uh, one lateral shield here and one lateral shield here. There you go, lateral arm shield. Okay, so those four integrate, and you can see that they're slightly flexible. They're not uh, as as uh, with uh, the asteroidians. They are not fused together, and so that gives it flexibility. And also on the sides of the arms, you'll see these spines growing out, okay, growing out from the sides. So we saw that in the picture before, pointed to, those give, help them give traction or can be used for defense. And then here's the water vascular system with the, uh, with the ampulla and podium uh, right here, okay, the, with the podium sticking out, okay, right there. So there are two of those for every segment and they just join up one segment after segment after segment. The, and the reason they're called brittle stars is because the arms will break off quite easily. That way, if a fish comes along and nips off an arm or something like that, then the whole animal isn't dragged out from its hiding place, but the arm uh, breaks off and will continue to wriggle, sort of like a, like a lizard tail. And you can see here in this micrograph, a uh, picture of the arm regenerating. So they're very good at regenerating uh, from that damage. They'd rather sacrifice a little part of their arm or something and grow it back than, be the, than have the whole body uh, of the, uh, the starfish or the whole organism eaten. Okay, so at this point, it's probably a good idea to stop and check out the links to the brittle star movement. So you can see the uh, intervertebral long lat um, the long muscles that reach down the length of the arm and help these things move. They move very differently than the than the asteroidians. For feeding, they could can be carnivores or they might be scavengers. And this is why we often see these things um, sitting underneath rocks. Uh, the the central disc is covered and stays safe underneath the rocks and you'll see the arms sticking out into and they will um, sweep along the sediment next to where their hiding place is and they pick up any uh, detritus or um, sometimes they'll walk out to dead things and they will um, find those dead things and pick those up and then uh, eat them using their, uh, they bring the, the uh, food to the mouth. Uh, or if they sit under the rock and only pick up the small particulate matter that settles near that rock, then that would be called a deposit feeder. They'll use a very small, um, they'll pick up the very small organic stuff that rains out of the water column. And then of course the basket stars are filter feeders. So they sling mucus between the, the spines of the arms and they collect the plankton and detritus that, uh, that settles on that in the current. So like I said, they, they often are in a protective retreat without uh, coming out to feed. Uh, when you do see the basket stars at night, generally, or when you do see them, in the, especially in the tropics, generally you see them at night where they come out and unfurl and feed. Uh, they have five large plates. So instead of two jaws like we have, they actually have, with that pentamerous radial symmetry, five plates or jaws that come together. I'll have a look at that in the next in the slide. Okay. Ah, this is uh, essentially what happens is they use their two feet to pass this bolus of food, the mucus covered. Um, or the mucus that they've slung out between their spines, they use that to, um, they collect that once it's got enough goo on it, organic particles, and they use their tube feet to sort of pass it down the arm 
to the mouth, and then they ingest that um, all those that particulate particulate bolus. So how do they chew? They've got these jaws, and this only shows two, but we'll have another a look at uh, an overhead with all five in a second. But they've got these plates right here, these bony plates right here that smash together these jaws that grind up whatever they're eating, and it goes into the stomach, which again is a, uh, a two-way gut that's only got the one entrance in and out right so in and out uh, going into that same place uh, so they can only eat as much as they can fit into their stomach and then they have to expel it uh, they have these area they don't have gills or anything but the, what they have is a vascularized area called bursa they have five of these they have these little bursal slits right here which are invagination and the bursa is an invagination of the epiderm and it's highly vascularized. And then the there's a blood vascular system. They actually have hearts that pump uh, blood out to the out to the arms. And they have gas exchange at the bursa. Right. And so here you'll see the bursal slits, which are at the base of each arm. Okay, two of them at the base of the arm. And now you can see the all these jaws as well that um, come together and they um, come in a five directional grinding machine in order to uh, grind up the food that's coming in. And again, you'll see like the repetitive nature of the segments of the arms. Okay, for reproduction, there can be asexual or sexual. Um, so mostly they're dioecious, so male or female, and they uh, that means high, but sometimes they're hermaphrodites, which uh, is male first is protandry. So, but they'll be male or female at any particular time. Uh, so eggs and sperm can be uh, broadcast, or sometimes the eggs are brooded within the bursa. Okay. All right, so brooding, common in ophiroids, sorry, rather than asteroids. 